market checklist says buy this dip. With us now is the author of that report, City's Chief Global Equity Strategist Robert Buckland. Robert, thanks for joining us. Why? Why buy this dip? Dip. Well, what our bear market checklist is intended to do is to show whether a dip is destined to turn into a proper bear market. Um, we got up to 13 and a half red flags back in the uh, 2007 peak. We got up to 17 and a half back in the uh, 2000 peak. We're still only up at three and a half now. So I think the market was due a correction. We were waiting for a dip to buy into. And we think this is the one uh, that we would uh, take on right now. What would you be buying right now, specifically? I think just buy the broad equity asset class. I think that there's some value there to be found in, say, some of the more cyclical areas. We quite like the energy and material sector, so on. My strategy team also like the financials. So we like a bit of that, but we keep also keep a core holding in the, the broad technology sectors across the world right now as well. So buy everything in terms of buying the indices. Robert, what are the flags that it would have taken for you to say don't buy this dip, or, or how many flags would it have taken? Yeah, I, it, the, the ones that are worrying at the moment are one that you've just mentioned. The uh, 10 minus two year yield curve has just inverted. That's been a good historic indicator of a recession and bear market to come somewhere about 18 months out. So it's really important to emphasize this is not a coincident indicator. It doesn't invert and then you get a recession the next day. It inverts and then you get a recession in 18 months time. So that's definitely one that's worrying. We're worried about the state of corporate balance sheets. But there are lots of other things that are much less worrying, like mutual fund flows are pretty weak. That's typically very high at the top of the cycle. So we can see some things to worry about, but we can see more things to not worry about. That's what the checklist is supposed to help us uh, deal with. Hey, Robert, uh, back in July, uh, City published a bear market checklist. Uh, about four of 18 components were flashing sell, and that's compared with uh, 17 out of 18 back in 2000. Uh, is it still four, or is it, is it risen since then? Uh, it's still three and a half right now. As I said, one of the key ones that is worrying is the inverted yield curve, but other things don't look so worrying. And, and Citi's also been pretty aggressive about their calls for a Fed rate cut. Uh, I think they're still looking. They were looking for 50 in July. Uh, why would you be wanting to buy this dip if you thought the Fed really needed to come to the rescue? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the equation. Uh, part of the equation that we have to throw into this is the move in, in monetary policy. Look, we saw something very similar to this back in 15, 16, where the stock market fell 15 percent. But our bear market checklist was telling us to buy into that dip. And of course, with hindsight, that was the right thing to do. We think we're seeing something similar now. Now, look, the market in the short term could still go down more. But it was a, it, this is the kind of dip that we were waiting for. We didn't want to chase the market higher, but this is the kind of dip that we were waiting for to get our clients back in. It's interesting to talk to, to talk about that or for you to talk about that comparison to 2015, 2016. We were actually talking about it on, uh, on this desk in the past hour as well. What do you see as the similarities? Is it the fact that you saw the industrial side of the economy weaken, even go into recession, while the rest of the economy, the consumer side, services side, stayed strong? Yeah, I mean, global PMIs back then were weak. China was weakening then. Um, the U.S. was weakening then. Global GDP slowed down from 3.1%, 3.2% growth right down to 25 Right now, we've downgraded it, the expectation for this year, from somewhere around 3.1, 3.2 to 2.8. So we're kind of going the same way. We're not there yet, but there's a slowdown going on out there. Um, that one was turned around by policymakers. We think this slowdown will eventually be turned around as well.